I grew up in a community that revolves around the football. Getting a scholarship offer from the University of Texas to play football is a dream come true. Before I started at UT, I went into cardiac arrest. I lost my football career without having a chance to fight for it. Coach Brown said the day that Matt committed to us, the Longhorn football family committed to him. I couldn't imagine where I would be right now if my scholarship offer was retracted. I attribute my situation in life to Texas doing the right thing. Only here. We've waited months for this day. LSU is coming off of a record season. So are we. We're really excited to open up against Georgia. They're a great team. Um, it's a great SEC rivalry competition. It's going to be loud. It's going to be competitive, but that's what we like. I think LSU, Georgia, we always bring out the best in each other. They're working hard, and we're working hard, and it's just going to be a really fun meet. We can get a whole lot of fire up on LSU versus Georgia. Two of the best teams in the country. Going head to head. You don't want to miss this. It's the dogs versus the tigers. This is Friday Night Heights. Welcome to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center on the campus of Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge for tonight's SEC gymnastics matchup between two top 10 teams as the number two LSU Tigers welcome the number nine Georgia Gym Dogs. Hi everybody, I'm Bart Connor, and I'm proud as always to be joined by my fellow Olympic medalist Kathy Johnson Clark. And here we go, Kathy. It's the start of the 2017 season here in the SEC, and every year it just gets better and better. And look no further than the past to see exactly why it's so big and so great. It's tradition, intense rivalries, and periods of dominance. Flash all the way back to 1981 and the first SEC championships. LSU hosted, LSU won. They haven't won since. Then it went four years, Florida dominated, then two plus decades of Georgia and Alabama going back and forth and making their mark nationally. Then it was Florida and Alabama for the last decade. And then LSU finishes on top of all the SEC at the Nationals as the runner up. Add some great live television and this <laughs> conference just gets better and better. Well, there's no question. There's a lot of parody in women's gymnastics in the SEC and I'm looking forward to the season with you. And I'm also looking forward to working with Holly Rowe tonight. Holly has joined us. She's in the tunnel now where the teams are getting prepped for their introductions. Holly. Well, there is so much excitement going on around in this building as teams get ready for their season opener. I spoke with some of the leaders on the LSU team and they said, you know, after the excitement of their best finish in school history last year, they realized, hey, we fell short. Sure, we were number two. We didn't win the national championship. So that is the number one goal. And so their goal for tonight in this opening meet is the battle of perception. Their skills may not be technically where they want them to be, but they are going to put on a show and show the nation they are ready to challenge for a championship. And for the Georgia Gym Dogs, they finished sixth in the country, but they lost some key performers, two national champions, a six-time All-American, and so they are going to have to come together as one. Let's take a peek behind the court and hear the Gym Dogs getting ready. Are we are excited for tonight? Yeah! They have got 10 upperclassmen who were mostly specialists last year, so they are going to have to come together as one to be a great team tonight and perform here in a very difficult environment. And now let's check in with the PA announcer and meet our teams. Roll member and Scarlett Williams, a member of the 2015 class. Ladies and gentlemen, your LSU gymnastics alumni. And a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of LSU. Welcome inside the Maravich Assembly Center for tonight's NCAA and Southeastern Conference Gymnastics Meet as we welcome our visitors from Athens, Georgia, the University of Georgia Gym Dogs. Let's meet the Gym Dogs. Gigi Marino, VV Babalus. Morgan Reynolds, Ashlyn Broussard, Rachel Dixon, Haley Sanders, Sydney Sneed, Rachel Schick, Natalie Bacuick, Jordan Pedersen, Jasmine Arnold, Sabrina Vega, Lauren Johnson, Gracie Cherry, Beth Roberts, and Caroline Bradford. The head coach for Georgia is Dana Durante. Hey, hey, hey. 
of this team. 14,296 people witness an epic moment for the Tigers of LSU. Ladies and gentlemen, let's greet your 2016 National Runners Up. It's now 2017, and here come your Fighting Tigers of LSU. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the 2017 Tigers. A freshman from Claremont, North Carolina, Ashlyn Kirby. A seven-time Junior Olympic National Champion, including back-to-back all-around champion in 2014 and 2015. She's a freshman from Chino, California. Please welcome Kennedy Edney. A two-time Olympian and a member of the 2016 Great Britain Gymnastics Team from Rio. She's now a Tiger and a freshman from Bristol, England. Please welcome Ruby Harold. An academic All-American and a sophomore from Orfield, Pennsylvania, Caitlin Zabransky. A sophomore from Waxhaw, North Carolina, Juliana Canamella. An All-American on Mars. And a sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. Lexi Priestman. This Tiger was a member of the All-SEC freshman team. Now a sophomore from Houston, Texas. McKenna Kelly. A three-time All-American and a member of the All-SEC team and All-SEC freshman team. A sophomore from Lee Summit, Missouri, Sarah Finnegan. A Tiger, now a junior from Plano, Texas, Lauren Lee. A two-time academic All-American and a junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, Kylie Moran. An academic All-American and a junior from Redwood City, California, Aaron Magadig. One of the nation's top all-arounders a year ago as the national runner-up on the floor and third place finisher in the all-around, a six-time All-American now a junior from Temple, Georgia, Maya Hambrick. This Tiger is an All-American on bars and a senior from Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Say hey to Shay Zamarde. A four-time All-American and a three-time academic All-American. Now a senior from Lafayette, Sydney. And ladies and gentlemen, this Tiger owns six perfect tens in her career. She is the reigning SEC floor champion and SEC specialist of the year. She's an 11-time All-American and now a senior from Lake Mary, Florida. Please welcome Ashley Nett. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 Tigers of LSU. And now to introduce your LSU coaches. In her seventh season as a volunteer assistant coach, five-time first-team All-American and a two-time national champion, Ashley Claire Kearney Thickpin. Now in his 18th season as an assistant coach, Bob Moore. In his fifth season as associate head coach, Jay Clark. 
and Tiger Band beginning her 40th season tonight here in the Maribyrnong Center. She is the Dean of SEC Coaches, the head coach of your Fighting Tigers, D.D. Bro. Tiger fans, for the fifth time in the last nine seasons, LSU reached the pinnacle in college gymnastics by advancing to the NCAA Super 6 in 2016. The Tigers totaled 31 wins, the most in school history. They earned 17 All-America honors, and LSU captured the 15th regional title in school history in this record-breaking season. At the NCAA Championships, the Tigers made a furious comeback in the second half of the meet, to defeat powerhouses Alabama, Florida, UCLA, and Georgia in the final standings to finish as the national runner-up. Ladies and gentlemen, a Maravich Center salute to the LSU Tigers for their 2016 Super Six appearance. We add another banner to the top of the Maravich Center. Let's drop that banner. Now, Tiger fans, please turn your attention to the competition floor for a special presentation. LSU's run to the fifth Super Six appearance in school history last season, Louisiana's own head coach Didi Bro reached the exclusive 700 win milestone as she continues to lead the LSU gymnastics program to new heights. Now in her 40th season as the mastermind of the LSU gymnastics program and now the Dean of Coaches at LSU and the SEC, Dee Dee has represented LSU at the highest level in both the gym and in the classroom. Her dedication to the student athletes has transcended into academic community and many team successes throughout her tenure. Joining Coach Bro on the floor, LSU President F. King Alexander, Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics Joe Oliva, and Governor of the State of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards. They will honor Dee Dee Bro with a plaque honoring her 700 wins and her 40th season as your head coach of the Fighting Tigers. Let's hear it, P Mac, for Dee Dee Bro. What a spectacular night here in Baton Rouge. LSU is undefeated in the PMAC in the last three years. However, their only regular season SEC loss was to Georgia, and Georgia is here tonight. Big one coming up. All right, the final piece. A uh, little to the left. Our trip to SEC country was amazing. Yeah, it was. So many great people, and man, can they tailgate. It's official. SEC in the house. Yeah. Welcome back. Let's go make some sausage. Man, let's go. Once you get in the Army, you hear the term Ranger, and you look at it as the highest standards. I was extremely proud to be part of the 1st Ranger Battalion. When I was deployed, I knew that USAA was taking care of my wife when she was back home. And now I know with my son that the USAA will continue to provide the insurance and protection we need. They always say, you've served your country, so we're here to serve you. My name is Alejandro Villanueva, and I'm a USA member for life. Call USAA today to talk about your insurance needs. Welcome back to SCC Network. It's Friday Night Heights. Number nine, Georgia, visiting number two, LSU. I'm Bart Connor along with Kathy Johnson-Clark, and we're so excited about this next three months 
of live gymnastics on the SCC network, which of course all culminates in mid-April at the national championships in St. Louis. So let's just take a look at our predictions for who would be the most likely teams to make it into that Super 6 final based on the preseason polls. Well, I'll tell you, the big picture looks so bright and so exciting. There are so many teams there that can really vie for that national title. Alabama's in there. Boy, this is a team that is really known for peaking at the right time. Florida had a coaching change, but a great season last year. Won the SEC championships, and then maybe surprised some by finishing fourth at nationals. LSU, wow, all eyes are on this team, and they are so inspired by their head coach, Didi Bro, so they're fired up. And Oklahoma, what can you say? Great team last year, and now they've added Maggie, Sc I mean, Maggie Nichols. It's going to be an incredible year. UCLA, how exciting for them. Two Olympic champions, Kyla Ross, Madison Cochin, added to their lineup. And, of course, Utah has their own Olympic reserve athlete, Michaela Skinner. That's a good point, Kathy, because the level of competition gets better and better. Take a look at the trends. More Olympians and national team members are joining the NCAA ranks, meaning they're keeping their collegiate eligibility alive. So Olympic champions, Coach Jan and Kyla Ross, Ruby Harrell from Great Britain, just came from Brazil, where she competed for England in the Olympics there, and Maggie Nichols at OU. The attendance across all of the gymnastics venues is record setting. Utah, Alabama, LSU, and Georgia all average over 9,000 people in attendance at each home meet. And of course, the college hedge coaches staying for an extended period of time. I think this is fascinating because we talk about Dee Dee Bro, of course, in her 40th year. Other coaches have been in their 28th years. So it's really exciting. It's one of the best jobs in all of coaching gymnastics for sure. Absolutely. And when you look at this matchup that we've got tonight, Georgia and LSU. There is so much history between these two teams. It is a great rivalry that goes back years and years, and it'll be super exciting here. Let's take a look at the dominance in the NCAA over the last 34 years. You can see that 19 of the championships since going back to 1982 have been won by Alabama, Georgia, and Florida combined. Oklahoma has two, Utah nine, and UCLA six. So once again, a real dominance of success in the SEC, and that's why the houses are full, that's why we're live on TV, and that's why we're excited about tonight's matchup. All right, let's talk about some of the newcomers who are coming into the program right now because that's very exciting. Oh, let's talk about the newcomer, the returners first. Oh, so exciting. Ashley Nat and Mai Hambrick, both of LSU, had terrific seasons last year. Of course, we saw perfect tens from Bugs, as we call her. Maya Hambrick ended up third in the all-around. Then Mackenzie Brennan and Katie Bailey of Alabama. They came on strong at nationals, did a great job there. They're going to be superb this year. Alex McMurtry on Florida is going to be awesome. How about the newcomers? Because this is also very exciting, the level of competition coming into the collegiate ranks. We talked about them. Olympians, world championship medalist, Ruby Harold of Team GB. Kennedy Edney, a freshman level 10 gymnast who came in. She is so ready to compete in college. Sabrina Vega, an absolutely beautiful elite gymnast who's back in the sport. And of course, Maddie Desch, who's going to support Alabama. It's All right, what's well, going to be a great night of gymnastics here from Baton Rouge. We're glad you've joined us. We are live, folks, as the number nine Georgia Gym Dogs take on number two LSU. Alexa, ask Tracker to find my phone. Okay. Oh no. Alexa, what do I have on my calendar this afternoon? You have a dentist appointment at 2 o'clock. Alexa, how many calories in a chicken wing? A chicken wing contains 88 calories. And we know where the potato salad is? Day. I'm good. I won't be late. Hey, Mom. Yeah? No kissing on the first date, all right? Life doesn't always stick to a plan, but with our investment expertise, we'll help you handle what's next. Financial guidance while you're mastering life. From Chase, so you can. As we mentioned, in her 40th year, 
Is this the year for the LSU Tigers? Take a look at this. In 2016, they were second. 2015, they were disappointed not finishing in the Super Six. 2014, they were third. So they've been so close. And I know DD Bro is trying to manage expectations of her team and her fans. But it's hard not to think, is this the year for DD Bro and the spectacular LSU Tigers? Georgia, of course, is in a rebuilding year of sorts. Dana Durante has been in charge of the program for the last five years, but the real challenge will be, can Georgia recover from the key losses? Brandy J, National Vault Champion, Brittany Rogers, National Bars Champion last year, and Mary Beth Box, six-time NCAA All-American. All three of these young ladies have graduated, and that decimates the team in terms of their highest scoring athletes. 10 of the 24 scores are gone, and those are probably 10 of the highest scores of the 24 from last year's season. So it's actually kind of crazy weather here tonight in Baton Rouge. It's inclement at best. And Holly Rose got a report because that might affect how our competition goes tonight. Holly. Well, that's right. This inclement weather has caused one of the judges to not arrive yet. Her plane from Dallas is a little bit late. She's in the air. Hopefully she will arrive, but that's going to put a little extra pressure on Kathy Kuhn. Kathy Kuhn is a 40-year judge. She has got a lot of experience, so she's going to have to move between vault and uneven bars, so both coaches are aware of the situation, but we'll have to be a little patient here. The weather causing some issues with the judges. All right, I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, I know in age group meets, every once in a while, a judge doesn't make it because of, you know, car trouble or something, but uh, this will be interesting tonight. It's the opening meet of the season, and we're already finessing it as we go. So we are ready to start. The home team, as always, gets what we call the Olympic order, which is vault, bars, beam, and floor. And the visiting team does the flip-flop of that. So LSU, as the home team, will open up on the vault with Juliana Canamella, the sophomore, out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. And they are so well-trained on this event. Bob Moore does a terrific job preparing them for competition. This Last year, number one in the country on vault. This is typically a very explosive event for the Tigers. I watched Juliana do an amazing vault in the intra-squad. She does a Yurchenko full. Watch how she blocks up, sets before the twist. Very, Whoa. very nicely done. A little bit of a pipe down for the landing. A very nice technique. Good push off the table. She does a very nice job of getting those arms back, blocking up, setting up the layout before the twist. Right here, good clean form, tight body, just a tiny little bit of a pike and a baby hop in the end. And you see Bob Moore in his 18th season. He's the vault expert at LSU and he was proud of her effort there. Beautiful technique for the first vault for the LSU Tigers of the 2017 season. So what the judge is gonna have to do is come up with a score for the vault and then either judge all the way from the vault position or she will get up and walk, get a little bit closer to bars, as she should. <laughs> she's gonna get <laughs> so, her workout tonight, because there she goes. Now oh. she's gotta change mindset. You can imagine, judging vault is one skill. I give her bonus points. One technique and one landing, but going to the bars is a whole nother monster in terms of technical requirements and rules. So this will be very interesting tonight as Ashlyn Broussard Excuse me, I believe it's Haley Sanders who's going first. A junior making her debut, so truly a wonderful moment for this athlete. Very nice, Pike Jaeger. The judges are going to look for these. Oh no, a little trouble with that handstand. She arched over. Oh, oh missed the transition down to the low bar. Oh, what a shame. There's a young lady that's been fighting for a spot in the lineup for the last three years on bars, beam, and floor. Absolutely. Oh, that's too bad. Very clean form, but that was a major mistake in the middle of the routine, so it would be a significant deduction. Right here, she just rushes that bail, that transition down to low bar, misses her grip and the handstand position and does her best to get back into the momentum of the routine. Haley, the junior out of McKinney, Texas, did her club training at the World Olympic Gymnastic Academy in Texas. Now, important to mention that uh, in gymnastics, the six compete, five scores count, so they can drop a low score, and of course, that will be the score 
that Georgia hopes to drop. Holly? Well, Haley Sanders is a great story. Dana Durante was telling us that uh, before this season, you know, she's a junior. She hadn't been in the lineup. She'd been fighting but hadn't been able to get there. Her highest score had been 9.7, and that wasn't good enough for the lineup. So they really challenged her this season. Like, if you want to be here and be part of this team, we need more. And to her credit, she's been able to done, do that. She's fought her way into the lineup. It's tough to see her start out with that problem here in her opening meet. But, you know, I have to give her credit. In her warm-ups, she was missing her big release move. At least she got the release move, Kathy. That part she did conquer. That's a big part of gymnastics. When you have a bad warm-up, really challenging to block that out of your mind. Trust your training. And remember how many times you've done it so well in practice. It's interesting that one of the issues with the Georgia Gym Dogs this year is that they have a lot of senior leadership. But these young ladies, many of them, have not made the lineup of the last couple of years. So a lot of extra pressure on them to right. step up and fill in for Brandy J, Mary Beth Fox, Brittany Rogers, and others. Interesting note about Haley Sanders. Her father is a retired Marine, so she has lived in Japan, Virginia, California, Texas, and Georgia. The junior out of McKinney, Texas. I have to say, this is a little challenging for the athletes as well because this completely takes you off the rhythm mm. that you are accustomed to in a normal competition where you're just back to back. Score for Juliana Canamella, the first vaulter for LSU, was a 9.825. You know what's interesting about this is that usually when a routine is hit, it's quite easy to calculate the score. When there's a mistake, that's when the judges really have to grind the pencil to make sure that they have fulfilled all the requirements and they took all the exactly. technical deductions. It's so not just taking a deduction for the fall or the miss or the form break, but the elements that need to be in that routine for their difficulty, for their connections. Judges don't have an easy job, and it's made much more difficult in this competition. Kathy Q. It's what a good sport, really, to think about this. She didn't didn't sign up for this, but uh, I can tell that with the PA announcer acknowledging what she's up against tonight, everybody understands it's rainy and icy out, and the fact that she made it here uh, to judge this meet is terrific, but it will throw a wrench in the timing, no question about it. All right, our second vaulter now coming up for LSU is Sarah Finney. A very pretty vaulter. Look at the toe point throughout, and boy, does she find that landing. Best part of her vault is just the stretch in that laid out position with the toes pointed throughout the entire skill from the board. Squeezes those legs together. Now they will get her a little bit. Landings, of course she didn't move her feet, but watch where her chest is relative to the floor. It's a little bit forward, a little bit down. You can see it better right here. They want it to land with the hips directly under the shoulders and the head up. But she finessed that landing so beautifully. You know what's exciting about tonight is all of these athletes have been training. They, many of them came back in the summer. You know, they did that sort of unofficial training until the season can start in the fall. And they've been really putting in the work for the last couple of months. Uh, everybody's excited about finally getting started in competition. Finnegan's score was a 9.85, the sophomore out of Lee's Summit, Missouri. get our judge back to the uneven bars and this is an amazing story Morgan Reynolds coming up now the senior out of Athens Georgia what an inspiring story last year she fell ill with E. coli and missed most of the season only to come back late in the year and contribute to Georgia's Super 6 finish Dana describes her as a worker being such a dedicated athlete Nice job so far. A few little form deductions throughout the routine. Her feet a little short on that handstand. We'll talk about that throughout the competition. But cranks up those giants and gets the double layout, not the landing. The big stuff was there. It's the little, little things that are going to add up in terms of deduction. Haley Sanders, who led them off, had only an 8.7. So a little additional pressure here on Georgia since all five of these next scores should count. 
Anytime you, the gymnast goes into a handstand, you really want to see him right on top of the bar in that hunt, 90 degrees, she's at 70, so that's a deduction. If they're within 10 degrees, it can only be up to a 500, but she got at least a tenth of a point. Double layout, nice in the air, a little bit of a hop, but I think she's happy to get that first one out of the way. She was the finalist for the Honda Inspiration Award in 2016, and the coaches acknowledge that she still isn't quite all the way back. They're still working with her, managing her energy levels and her immune system because um, she still isn't fully recovered from that challenge with E. coli last fall. As we've mentioned about Georgia and uh, the graduation of three, not just seniors, but super seniors for them, two national champions. They really have a patchwork team here. And by that, I mean they're going to put together as beautiful a quilt as possible with specialists on each event. And as we've mentioned, upperclassmen who are now stepping into the lineup for the first time ever, it's really, it's wonderful and gratifying to see um, if you're a fan of gymnastics because you know how much work goes in to getting in the lineup. Holly. Well, when we spoke with Georgia coach Dana Durante, she said that the bars is the greatest area of improvement from August until now. She said, keep in mind, they have four new competitors, four new routines there, and that's hard to come together all at once. She says, I believe that we will get better and better on this event as the season goes on. So today might not be a great indication of just how much improvement they've made, but she's looking forward to those four new competitors and what they'll bring to the gym dogs this season. Thank you, Holly. Yes, that's true. None of those four competitors competed for Georgia last year in the lineup. So uh, typically a strong event for them. Sydney Ewing will be the next vaulter up for LSU. Sarah Finnegan had a 9.85. And this can be a big vault. She does a one and a half twist, so she's going to land facing away from the table. Worth a little bit more on the code of points. Very, very nice air awareness. She knew exactly where she was. Maybe a tad short on rotation, but she finessed that landing. Handled it very well. This is worth a 9.95 if done perfectly. She has a few little, few little form issues. Legs bend a little bit in the air, right there as she comes in for the landing. But a very nice soft landing. And again, that blind landing. Notice she's landing facing away from the table. Sydney Ewing, the senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana, four-time All-American, and they're really expecting her to be a team leader this year in 2017. Last year, of course, she was consistently a top 10 ranked vaulter in the NCAA. She can go 9-9 plus on three events normally, vault, beam, and bars, which she typically contributes. Her score is a 9.875, so LSU started with a 9.825, went to 9.85 and 9.875. So they are building on the vault as we go back to the bars for Georgia. Once again, a recap on their scores. Bailey Sanders led them off with an unfortunate mistake, an 8.7. 9.775 is the score for Morgan Reynolds, very respectful. Lauren Johnson, senior out of Atlanta set to go now. Very aggressive, dynamic, and powerful performer. Oh, short on that handstand a little bit. Beautiful ganger. It's nice to see a variety of different release moves from this team. Much better on that handstand. Maybe a slight deduction on that last one. Beautiful laid out position in the double layup, a little short of the rotation, so she had to hop forward. Let's see what it looks like with our protractor. Remember, right on top of the bar is 90. Woo, that one's very, very short. So they will hit her up anywhere from a tenth to two tenths of a point in that range. Flyway half was her release move. That was probably the best part of the routine, much better on that handstand. And a double layout, looked for the landing, couldn't quite secure her feet to the mat, but not bad. Holly. 
Lauren Johnson is a remarkable story. She missed her sophomore season with a tear in her ACL. So she actually is a senior this year, but there is a chance that they could get her a medical red shirt back and come back to compete next year. But she has big plans. She might want to just move on because she's planning to join the U.S. Air Force as a medical officer. She will enlist. She will get all of her medical training when she joins. Uh, she comes from a long line of people in her family who have served their country. And so I just am I'm amazed by this young lady, uh, also a medical officer in the Air Force, coming up next season. She will see how her body holds up this year and possibly uh, join for another year next year. And that's still out there for her. Great report, Holly. She had a 9.65 for Lauren Johnson, the senior out of Atlanta. And once again, a reminder if you're just joining us because of inclement weather here in Baton Rouge, we're one judge short. And so one of our judges is going back and forth from event to event. That's adding a little bit of time to today's competition. Kennedy Edney is the vaulter coming up for LSU. She's an exciting freshman Watch from California. The speed and the power and the block oh, of that ball. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. wow, what a debut. Her first vault as an LSU Tiger and she drills it. How exciting for this young lady. One and a half twist and just <laughs> nails it. Look at that expression, I love it. Beautiful block off the table, nice height, great distance. And you can't land any better than that. Look at Bob Moore in the background, and the team loved it. That was so good! Firebree the Dragon! The monster! <laughs> Firebree Fire the dragon. dragon, I love it! And Dee Dee Bro, you heard her talk about enthusiasm is important. Well, guess what? That's what it's all about here tonight in Baton Rouge. And what a start to the collegiate career for young Kennedy Edney out of Chino, California. And now to the bars for Georgia. Lauren Johnson at a 9.65. Rachel Dixon up now for Georgia. Really nice swinger on this event. So far, so good. Few little form things. She separates her legs just a little too soon out of the kip into the cast. Those are little things. Oh, oh, bent her knees just a little too far on the landing and couldn't quite hold on to it. But a very, very nice routine. Rachel Dixon, the freshman out of Canton, Michigan. Showed good amplitude on that toe on reverse heck was a little bit close on the regrass. You really want to see it a little farther away from the bar. And a beautiful double layout. Just couldn't quite hold on to the stick. I can't blame her as a freshman to be just a little conservative on a release move. You don't want to sling it out there too high. So it's not uncommon when you're just being a little cautious to pull that in a little extra close. And uh, probably a smart move considering they already had a mistake there. The scores so far for Georgia on the bars, 8-7-9-7-7-5-9-6-5. So not what you typically see from a Georgia gym dog team. And this is going to be the challenge all year long for Coach Dana Durante and Jay Hogue, who is in charge of the bars there, is to take these athletes and bump those scores up to the 9-8 plus range for them to be competitive. How about this, Kennedy Edney, a 9.95 in her first vault as a LSU Tiger. What a thrill and what a way to start a collegiate career. Let's go to Holly. Well, what makes that vault by Kennedy Edney even more impressive is that she has been ill. Yesterday, she didn't practice at all. They had to give her some antibiotics. She was very ill, but she has come out and feeling pretty good tonight, make the, the home crowd feel pretty well, good as well. Maya Hambrick now. She does a full in this competition, oh. and wow, she's like, well, if you can oh. stick, so can I. <laughs> now that vault is, uh, it was devalued a couple years ago. So many of the collegiate athletes do the full, so it's a 9-9, but that was near perfect, especially that landing. And she is working a one and a half, probably in the next two or three meets. She'll start throwing the more difficult vault, but what a start to her season. I think she's got some glue 
on those feet because <laughs> they didn't move one little bit. Oh, you can see why she is a six-time All-American, the junior from Temple, Georgia. Now that vault is scored from a maximum of a 9.95, and her score is in 9.925 for Maya Hambrick. That's right, I did my wishful thinking that they had devalued this <laughs> further to give a little bit of room for what we're gonna see later in the game, a double twist. Rachel Dixon had a respectable 9.7, so things looking a little bit better for Georgia on the bars. Rachel Schick, the senior out of Rancho Cucamonga, California now, the two-time All-SEC on this event. They're all just a little bit tight, and by that I mean they're not quite hitting the handstands, holding back a little, but she nailed that handstand. You can really see her get into this routine, find her rhythm, much better handstand positions as the routine goes on, and a very nice double layout, the best stick so far for Georgia in terms of landing. We'll take a look at her position. She is right on the very edge of no deduction. Now, technically, written in the book, it says no deduction if you're within that 10 degrees, but most of the coaches agree the judges are definitely taking a half a 10, unless they're right on top of that bar. Pike down a little too much on that double edge. Could have held that position just a tad longer. Rachel has dealt with a variety of injuries throughout her career. A thumb injury, ankles have been a problem. 2014, she was out with a fractured hip. And so uh, there's no question that these athletes are pound for pound some of the toughest athletes on the planet. Yeah, don't let the glitter and rhinestones fool you. These are tough, tough women. All right, let's give you a quick reminder on Collegiate Gymnastics dual meet rules. Six gymnasts per team will compete on each event tonight. Just the best five scores count, and the lowest one is dropped from each team's event total on each event. After all four apparatus, the team with the highest cumulative score wins. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, the home team gets what we call the Olympic order. Vault, bars, beam, and floor, and the visiting team does the flip-flop of that. Bars, vault, floor, and the visitors have to finish on the perilous beam. There goes our judge getting back from vault in time to get set to judge bars. Uh, I'm sorry, there was a judging conference on bars, which even adds to the complications of tonight <laughs> <laughs> because the scores were not in range. You might explain that, Kathy. How is that? Uh, a factor in the rules. Well, typically in uh, dual competition, there are two judges per event. Um, they have to be within range. The higher the score, the closer those scores have to be. Otherwise, they have to confer. Okay, we go back to vault now. The final vaulter is the other all-arounder competing in tonight's competition from LSU. Maya Hambrick got a 9.925, so she's an all-arounder, and then Ashley Nat. What a senior season we could be poised to see from this young lady. Already an 11-time All-American. She's one of the few gymnasts in the country that does what we call a Yurchenko double full. Last year she scored perfect tens on this vault twice in the season. And I think this vault is powered by her enthusiasm. Watch how fast she twists two times around. got that landing so much more difficult though than any of the vaults we've seen thus far in the competition the cool thing is i think we may see four or five of these double twists in ncaa gymnastics this year and she started it all she really has an uncanny air awareness twists so fast like a tasmanian devil and then spots the floor Right there, very good position as she came in for the landing. 
and a tiny little hop. Now the judges really look at these landings and it's determined by how much movement. Obviously, if those feet don't move at all, there's no deduction as long as their chest is up. There's a small step, it'll be a tenth or less. They'll even take a little half tenth. Large step, those are the easiest to see, or a big hop, that's two tenths or more, and a fall, of course, is half a point. And the score in for Ashley Nett, a 9925. So the final three vaulters for LSU, 995 for freshman Kennedy Edney. Maya Hambrick, the junior, gets a 9925, and Ashley Nett, 9925. Sydney Sneed now, the sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina, the anchor performer for Georgia on bars. And a very nice anchor routine. This is such clean form. It looks like she glues her feet together. Very nice toe point. Look at the straight body on that giant swing all the way through the bottom. And a nice landing on the double layout. Seeing a lot of that dismount from this team, but I love to see the variety of the release moves from the Georgia gymnast, that's nice to see. Rachel Schick before her had a 9-7. So three scores in the 9-7 range for Georgia, 1-9-6-5, and this score will obviously add into the team score because remember, you drop one, and so the first score of 8.7 will be dropped and it will be replaced with whatever Sydney Sneed gets here. Really tricky, and as the season goes on, they'll really get that release point when they let go for their dismount. Very impressive score for LSU in the vault, 49-5-2-5. What a way to start the season down here in Baton Rouge. We're off to a great start. We are live, folks, on the SEC Network. The LSU Tigers go to bars when we come back. Drop him off by 9 p.m. All right, baby, enjoy your dad. How come you're never home? Son, I love you. There's just some things I can't explain. Dad! Mm -hmm. Officer Benson Downs, we have your son. We've got a problem. We're gonna get out of this. What the hell is going on? Put the gun down! You touch my son, I'm killing all of y'all. Sleepless, rated R. Emerge restored, fortified, replenished. Emerge every day with Emerge C. Packed with B vitamins, antioxidants, electrolytes, plus more vitamin C than 10 oranges. Why not feel this good every day? Emerge and C. Welcome back to Friday Night Heights. Here are the scores after the first of four rotations. Georgia opened on the bars with a 48-7. LSU incredibly impressive on the vault with a 49-5-2-5 and they do some of the most difficult vaults in the country. Let's break that down, Kathy. Well, let's go to school. You're gonna see lots and lots of your Chenko foals. Watch this. This is one twist in the laid out position. She'll land facing the table. If you add a half twist, here's Sydney Ewing doing the one and a half twist, adds it at the very end, lands facing away from the table and then leads right into a double twist all the way around two times spot the landing easy as that lsu off to a great start their vault score was 25 hundredths of a point behind their highest score last year of the entire season so lsu has a great start here in the first of four rotations alive when something just happened in the game that left you completely flabbergasted wait what did that one player slash coach slash mascot really just do that you can't be the only one trying to make sense of this so grab your phone open facebook press this and go live ask your friends if that actually happened it did then debate how that's even possible all right just remember there's still plenty of game left Can you feel something without touching it? See something with your eyes closed. 
When everything is designed around you, the driver, you can. The new Mazda 3. Last year I got sick with E. coli, um, right at this time, a year ago. I was in the hospital, I was in the ICU for a while. Someone came in every single day. They were just there to say like, hey, it's okay, like take your time, you've been through a lot. Once I was out of the hospital, the first few weeks where I was actually able to do gymnastics, I just kind of sat back and I was like, wow, this is gonna take a while. My mind, I was ready to go, but my body was holding me back a little bit, obviously. So that took a lot of patience. That whole experience taught me that life is so fragile, like you never know what can happen. And so for that, for me to go from like fighting, fighting for a spot in the lineup to like fighting for like a normal life to some degree, that will teach you a lot. Well, Morgan makes it sound so simple, but it was a life-threatening illness in the ICU, having to be on dialysis. It was very scary for this young lady, but now here she is. Her immune system is a little bit challenged. We've seen that they've taken her out of the beam lineup tonight, but she wants to be on all four events. She is asking her coaches to believe in her, and they do. But what a remarkable story for Morgan Reynolds. In one other update, though, I would like to keep us honest on what's happening with our judging situation here. The other judge has arrived, but to remain consistent, the same judge will judge this next rotation of uh, Georgia now on the vault and LSU on the bars so that the scores will remain consistent. Each judge has their own little take on things. So uh, we will get back to normal in the third rotation, guys. Okay, thank you, Holly, for that report. Morgan Reynolds, what an inspiring story. By the way, her hobby outside of the gymnastics is riding dirt bikes. That's the first gymnast I ever heard who did that. How about that? Okay, Georgia will go to the vault, which has traditionally been a very strong event for them. LSU will move in this second rotation to the uneven bars. Here's the lineup for Georgia. Ashlyn Broussard, Morgan Reynolds, Beth Roberts, Lauren Johnson, Rachel Dixon, and Sydney Sneed. And Ashlyn is very comfortable in this leadoff position. She has excellent technique, very consistent with the Yurchenko full. And especially since the judges have just seen some pretty spectacular vaulting from LSU, they want to come up with their best. Another one of those events where Brittany Rogers and Brandy J typically contributed a great deal. And Ashton Bassard in 2015 was the most valuable player on the team and the most improved gymnast that year. She's been working on her landings. A little bit on the front side of the table, so that kind of changes the trajectory of the block and the position in the air, but she handled it pretty well. Watch where her ma hands make contact. Well, it was actually up on top a little more than I thought. They'll get her on the big step on the landing. Yeah, really right up on top, not bad at all. The head was a little bit below the level of the table at the end of the, the flip and the twist. But that step, definitely on the large side. All of these landing deductions are quite yeah. subjective, of course, because from one judge's perspective, it's a small hop or a little slide of a foot. From another judge's perspective, it might look like a little bit longer of a reach, but that's why you have a couple of judges and the scores average out. Jay Zamardi. Now, she has typically been the anchor performer for LSU and the bars. They moved her from last to first this year. Here's the lineup. Zamardi, Hambrick, Nat, Edney, Finnegan, and Priestman. This is a really solid routine for them. Uh, she anchored all last year, as you said. Very successfully. Good, clean form. A little leg separations. Hard for the judge to see. They sit directly on the side of the uneven bars. So sometimes things we see from other angles the judges will not see. Love that dismount. Half turn into the double front. She's done that so well throughout her years of competition. Watch this, she'll do 
half twist right here and then double front. Of course, that's a blind landing. She handles it really, really well. You see Jay Clark step in there. He's the associate <laughs> head coach in his fifth season. He was formerly many years at Georgia. But Dee Dee Bro is quick to acknowledge that Jay Clark has been a real game changer here at the program at LSU. And you can see it in their recent success. And of course, he tends to specialize with the work on the uneven bars. And uh, Made all the difference in the world, really, when he came in. He's a very organized coach methodical and he came in and, and changed the culture really on that event for them. They do the same thing every day so they get into this rhythm, the same types of warm up, the same order of the way they do things and it just helps when you get into competition because the whole goal of gymnastics is to, to repeat what you do in the gym in practice, to just replicate that. We're set for Morgan Reynolds for the vault. 9-7-7-5 was the score for Ashlyn Broussard in the leadoff spot. Here's the senior from Athens, Georgia. Another Yurchenko fault. The very best part of that vault, of course, is the landing. The amplitude was not quite there. If you'll notice, it just sort of went all one height, all the way across the table from the run. There was no real block up. So she finishes with the head below the level of the table. So they'll get her a little bit on height, a little bit on distance, because some of the gymnasts are landing farther out but she was able to keep the legs in tight, come up with a great landing, so she gave nothing away there. And you see high tens there from Phil Ogletree in his fifth year at Georgia. He had coached for 12 years here under Dee Dee Bro at LSU. Formerly a student at Georgia, now he is working with the gym dogs and doing a nice job with the program there. There's Phil Ogletree. Maya Hambrick. The junior out of Temple, Georgia now. 9-8-5 was a very nice start off score for Shea Zamardi. Maya Hamburg has such a clean, steady way about her performance. Look at that handstand just right on top. She does the toe on into her release move. Shows great amplitude. Very nice precision throughout the routine. And good rhythm. She's a little bit short on that last handstand, but she finesses it so well, keeping her head in line, showing that straight body position. Almost got the stick. Just sort of slid that one foot back behind the other. You know, There's Kathy, a lot of experience there. Yeah, what I'm really sensing is this Maya Hambrick Ashley Nat duo in the all around could be the kind of duo that brings. LSU to a championship. You can see right there, they'll probably get just a little bit of a deduction on that last handstand. And she fights hard for the landing. Watch how she just sort of puts that one foot back. Dee Dee Bro, she said at the beginning of the meet, you know, Bart, this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> but I tell you what, it's amazing. Her enthusiasm never wanes. No. And it's just remarkable. 40 seasons. She was honored here tonight by the athletic director, the university president, and the governor of LSU. Deservingly so. If she anything, is the queen. Her enthusiasm has grown Good over point. the years. What she's done is learn to control her emotions and not wear everything on her face and her sleeve. Uh, in order to relax her athletes, and that, that's a good thing. These 40 years have been great to Didi Bro. 
Beth Roberts next up for Georgia. The score for Morgan Reynolds before her, a 9-7-2-5. So the two scores for Georgia on ball, Ashlyn Bassard 9-7-7-5, Morgan Reynolds 9-7-2-5. Oh no. Oh. oh. Almost looked like she got lost. But she's okay. Okay, so she handled that landing because it was definitely either got lost in the air. Here's a young lady who's a senior from Tifton, Georgia, but hadn't made the lineup the last few years. Yep, it was almost it was almost like she was gonna keep twisting instead of stop at that half twist, lay it out, feel for the landing. Friday Night Heights continues next week with ninth ranked Georgia taking on number eight Auburn at 7 p.m. Eastern presented by Belt. And after that one, it's number two LSU and number three Alabama from Coleman Coliseum. Both meets will also be streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. That's next Friday night as our season continues here on the SEC Network. And this is the conference. There's some disagreement on that. And, and the, the difficult part of judging this vault is you judge the vault that she does, right? Um, not that the not the vault that she planned to do or was going to do, and that was sort of in between. It wasn't even clear, really. I believe it was going to be uh, an Arabian half in front layout, um, or your Chinko half. They kind of looked the same, right? And then it looked uh, at for a moment it might <laughs> like have been a Yurchenko full. Keep going. She was lost. Yeah, she's, right. So that's the issue: is what was she intending to do? We've just had a little bit of everything in this first. Dana Durandi, the head coach at Georgia in her fifth season. She acknowledged the other day, I, 10 of my best scores went away to graduation. And so I'm having to build my team of a bunch of young ladies who have some seniority, but don't necessarily have a lot of competitive experience. And that seems to be showing a little bit tonight. Well, and they had, a, they had an inter-squad in Stegman Coliseum that went very, very well, but it's just different. When you get in a meet that counts, and your first meet is an away meet, the nerves are high, the surroundings are different, everything changes. You see the scores for LSU on the bars. Maya Hambrick a 9.875. Shay Zamardi a 9.85. And you know what? This is actually very good training. These, these breaks in the competition, this is something an athlete has to get used to. You never know what's going to happen in a meet. You have to be prepared mentally to handle it. Ashley Nat. We don't often see her on the bars, but as I mentioned earlier, she and Maya Hambrick both do the all around tonight. And this could be a dynamic duo for this team going through this season. But tiny bit off on that full pirouette. She pulled it off. Now this spot in the lineup will probably be Ruby Harold when she gets back and ready to compete again, fresh off the Olympics. They gave her a little bit of a break and they're easing her in, but Bugs comes in like the team player she is <laughs> and pulls off the routine <laughs> and ends it with a stick. <laughs> Jay Clark said she gets a little bit anxious sometimes on the uneven bars. She's quite comfortable on the leg events, yep. vault, beam, and floor. She gets a little funky in her handstand position, and then she whipped that out. Really had to work hard to get her feet down out of the air. She just didn't quite hit that release point really well. And you heard Dee Dee earlier saying, feet up, feet up, feet up. She didn't quite get her feet up at the end of that giant to go into that double layout. Ashley Claire Kearney, the former many-time All-American at LSU. She is one of the assistant coaches there now, and she's, in fact, responsible for a lot of the floor choreography. She's a delight to see. Does a great job with these routines. 
Okay, I think a lot of people watching the Olympics, you know, they saw this open-ended scoring system where there's a 15.1 and a 16.075. In NCAA gymnastics, and I think to their credit, they've retained the perfect 10 as perfection, so to speak. So to give you kind of an understanding of where these scores place, a 9-9 or up is just flat out excellent in any competition in collegiate gymnastics. 9-8 to 9-9 is definitely good. Uh, acceptable 9-7 to 9-8 range. And uh, anything below 9-7 in collegiate gymnastics is uh, not ideal. Right, no, Kim? and it's probably the score that they're looking to drop. Your top teams will look to score as close to a 9-9 average. By the end of season, that's really what it's going to take to win a national title. You've got to get all those scores up in the 9-9 range, 9-9 plus range, in fact. Ashley Nat, her score is in. It's a 9775. So um, the judges did make those uh, slight technical deductions as they should. We go back now to the vault. Lauren Johnson, Beth Roberts before her, an unfortunate 8425. Yurchenko full got good distance from the table, but no up. The whole key to vault is take the speed of the run and convert that forward speed with the block on the table to propel the afterflight up, way up, and hers just goes straight across. Most of the Georgia gymnasts have, have kind of been at that same level with their head, about the height of the table, some below, some right at the level. You really want to see it start finishing up above the level of the table to get those big scores that we just talked about. Six athletes on each team on each event. The top five scores count towards the team total. Lauren Johnson, interesting story, had a torn ACL back in 2015. She's coming back strong. Involved in the last four regular season meets last year with a 9.85 as her high. Kennedy Edney, what a way to start her career. Her best her ball, 9.95, her first performance as an LSU Tiger is the best season opening vault in school history. Well, how about that? Good for her. Talking to Coach Dee Dee Brill the other day, I said, let's talk a little bit about your team. And she goes, oh, I think you're going to like this Kennedy Edney. She's something. And what a way to start. Well, let's see what she can do on the bar. She doesn't like fire-breathing dragons. <laughs> let's see what she does here on the uneven bars with this long body that she has. Even bars takes a lot of patience. You've got to really wait for the right timing on those release moves. She did hers out of a clear hip circle. A bit short on that last handstand. And a double layout. Boy, that is the dismount of choice today from both teams, really. Notice how straight her body was. Some people do that double layout where they almost whip it and they go into an arch and then pipe down. I really like this. Clear hip to her release move. This handstand right at the end of the routine was just a little bit short. They're gonna get her for at least a tenth of a point there. Nice job on the bars for the freshman from Chino, California. She tinkered for a while with elite gymnastics, but then decided to finish her high school career as a very solid level 10 gymnast. Seven times she was a junior Olympic national champion. And her score is a 9.875. Very nice job for LSU, first meet of the season. Sometimes it's easy to get over-amped, over-excited on the uneven bars and rush those skills. Rachel Dixon now for Georgia on the vault. The freshman from Canton, Michigan. As you see there, six-time Junior Olympic National Team competitor. Doing a full here, but I know she's training a one and a half. Very nice landing in terms of not moving her feet. 
Her chest was a little bit down, but she showed really good distance from the table. We'll check the height here to see if she goes up much higher on, in terms of the block. Just a little bit low with the chest on that landing. Good form, legs together, and a little hop. Lauren Johnson before her at 9725. So you see the scores there for Georgia on the vault. And a 975 is coming in now for Rachel Dixon. So any score 97 and up is acceptable in collegiate gymnastics. And as Georgia's in a rebuilding year. They certainly have room to grow, and I think I'll, we'll see that there's the potential is there. It's just a matter of giving these young ladies the kind of competitive experience that they haven't had in the last few years. When you talk about experience, Sarah Finnegan here on the uneven bars has plenty of international experience and then a great freshman season last year. Beautiful release move. Really exquisite form. Legs together. The toe point is to die for. Might have been a tiny bit short on that handstand, but she worked it to the very end. Double layout. Slung it out just a little bit, so couldn't quite hit that shape in the air to get the perfect landing. But a good start to her season. We talk about the raising the level of competition in collegiate gymnastics. Here's a young lady that was an alternate to the 2012 Olympic team. You see that elite polish and level of technique, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. The toe point especially here. She does a good job of getting the feet up with just a little over rotation there and a step back. Here's what we have for LSU on the bars. Expect a good score there for Sarah Finnegan and their anchor performer will be Lexi Priestman, the sophomore out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes, when they get uh, Ruby Harold in this lineup, it will add so much strength to the middle of this lineup because they finish so strong with Sarah Finnegan and then Lexi Priestman. 9-9 nine, nine is the score for Finnegan. It just came in as we go to vault with Georgia, Sydney Sneed, the sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. She is their anchor performer. Before her, Rachel Dixon had a 9.75. And she's doing the one and a half twist. Does it very well. Reminds me of Brittany Rogers, uh, one and a half. The way that she does it, the technique she uses, very, very tight twist, good form. Remember, remember we saw Kennedy do it and really blast it up. This one doesn't quite have the height and the bigness of that ball, but it's so clean. Really like to see the legs this straight, this tight, toes pointed even throughout, maybe slightly off center. So they'll take a little deduction for that. All right, let's listen to what Dana Durandi just told her team. Hey, we talked about managing emotions. Hey, wait, I think we're better than what we're doing all the way around. I feel like you guys are aggressive on the start, but you've got to be able to finish strong. We've trained start to finish working through the middle with great gymnastics. And I feel like we're getting to the end of these things and we're sort of failing. Finish. Finish every landing. Finish every performance. Let's stay confident in the process. And Lexi Priestman now for LSU, the anchor performer on the bars. Nice combination. Two releases back to back. As she pulls off that handstand pirouette so aggressively. Early turn on that pirouette. A little short there on the handstand. Check out this dismount. Another double layout, but Beautiful. a perfect landing. What? <laughs> what a way to punctuate 
weight. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the bump. I was talking about the stick of the landing. But uh, how did she talk Jay Clark into I doing don't that? Know. I don't know. He's a good guy, I yeah. gotta say. But. <laughs> oh, look at this. The whole dance right there. <laughs> and like a dart right into the mat. Now, our feet were a little bit apart on the landing, but I don't think the judges can even see that. And bump. We need some music. <laughs> This I have not seen in collegiate gymnastics. Holly is with Coach Dana Durani right now from Georgia. Well, Coach, we talked to you before this event, and you knew that you had four new competitors on the bars, that that was going to be an area of growth for you this season. But what did you think about your opening rotation? I thought some things went well, but I saw some, some areas where they were a little bit timid, where they would start strong. I saw that a little bit on vault two. They would start strong and then just not quite go for that landing or not quite go for that handstand. I think you nailed it. It is going to be an area of growth. Both of those events are going to be areas of growth. I saw you gather your team together, though, and one of the messages was finishing. So you say you don't want that timid attitude. How can they finish better? They need to just trust their training. We told them before that they earned the right to go out here and be aggressive and be confident. And I see a little bit of that, but I don't see it all the way around it. So let's take a deep breath and really finish everything that we're doing. You said that some of your upperclassmen are going to have to step up and be big. We saw Beth Roberts struggle on that ball, but I saw you in this really great conversation with her. What was the message? You know, she's come so far, it, it, and it was awesome to see her start strong. She got lost in the middle, and that's just a little bit of focus. You, you can't lose focus in the middle, but for somebody who's worked so hard to get in the lineup, she's got to remember that all the way to the end. And she was disappointed with herself. She's got an opportunity over here on floor, and I said, hey, what are you going to do? And I'm, I can do it. I can do it. So I'm excited to see her over here. Can't wait to see how she responds. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. We are at the halfway point here in Baton Rouge. LSU has a 98-9, Georgia 97-5-5. Whether it's a pick and roll or home and auto, State Farm knows the power of having the right combination. The question is, do you? Go to therightcombination.com to find lockers in your area and online. How many feet from the ground is a regulation basketball hoop? <laughs> that is correct! Crack the right combination and you could unlock prizes, like a chance to win a trip to All-Star Saturday night. Here to help life go right, State Farm. When they came up here, we scared them off, but that won't be the last of it. You are scared of them. This ain't about me or you anymore. It's about the law. We are a family. We're united or we perish. Well, I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. On WGN America. Pete for Didi. Um, everything that she's done at this university, she's built the entire program um, basically by herself. It's not always easy, but nobody ever told me it was going to be easy. And, you know, I, I like a good fight. Didi is the woman. <laughs> if you have an issue, you go to Didi and she'll fix it right away. Um, but, no, I'm so thankful to have her as my coach. I think this season we're going to honor her through that and um, just do our best, but I mean, there's definitely a part of us that's like, we need to do it for her. I love LSU, I love the state of Louisiana, and I love my job, and I give it everything I've got every day. And you talk about the accolades of Dee Dee Bro, she's in her 40th season, reached five NCAA Super Six finals, three in the last four seasons. The big highlight, of course, last year finishing runner-up and I think there's a lot of fans of Dee Dee Bro, particularly here in Baton Rouge, who'd like to see her finally get an NCAA team championship. She might have the team to do it this year. Our own Holly Rowe got to spend a little time with Dee Dee today, and they had a lot of fun. Let's check it out. Well, Holly, welcome to my home. Um, you were curious to learn uh, about what I'm going to wear tonight and maybe some of the things that I'm not going to wear tonight. So um, let me just kind of give you a brief tour. You don't just walk into a shop and everything's tiger. No. So this is years of culmination. This is years of, of things and, you know, people making things for me and sending things. Tiger tights. <laughs> tiger tights. Tiger buttons. So I feel like your closet is just one way of showing your sassy spirit. What makes you so special? You know, I've always lived by the mantra that nothing great has ever been achieved without enthusiasm. And I like to, to dress with the enthusiasm that I want my kids to bring to every meet. 
Well, Dee Dee is much more than just her outfit. She is a sassy soul, and that really translates to her team. I'd like to thank her for letting us take a peek in her closet. That enthusiasm definitely shows up in her team on the floor. When we come back, we will have the third rotation for you here in Baton Rouge. Something new has arrived. Uniquely designed for the driven. Introducing the first ever Infinity QX30 crossover. Lease the first ever Infinity QX30 for $2.99 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. There's nothing quite as magical as staying at a Disney Resort hotel. So imagine, complimentary rides to and from the park, even extra time with your family in the park. And right now, you can save up to 25% on rooms at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels. So if you're not staying here, just think what you might be missing. Mac here in Baton Rouge. As tonight, the number nine Georgia Gym Dogs visit the number two LSU Tigers. LSU in charge with a 98-9, a very impressive score for the first meet of the season. And they go to one of their most improved events, the balance beam, and had a lot to do with this young lady, Erin McAdeg, the junior out of Redwood City, California. One of my favorite beam sets in collegiate gymnastics, especially in this opening position. She cherishes going first and does it like no one else. Very few gymnasts really perform on the balance beam. Some people simply survive the balance beam. Some people are good balance beam workers. They're very comfortable. She goes beyond that. It's a great combination of difficulty, both in the tumbling right here, the hands from the layout, step out. This floats it right into the landing. Facial expression. And even when the landing is a little bit off, she just finesses it. It's kind of a soft landing, isn't it? It's just beautiful. A great start. Now, she wasn't even going to be in the lineup until yesterday. The doctor released her. She has a little fracture in the navicular bone, but it healed even quicker than they had hoped. So she was able to take these landings, and look what she does with this one. No movement whatsoever. Excellent start. Every team in the country would be thrilled to have a leadoff performer with that kind of calm, cool demeanor. Well done for LSU in the first rotation, first beam performance. Morgan Reynolds will be the leadoff performer for Georgia. Quick reminder that all the judges are finally in the building. If you're just joining us, there's some inclement weather here in Baton Rouge, which has delayed people getting into the building. Traffic, there's rain and ice and other things outside, but we're all here and we're back on time as Morgan Reynolds, the senior out of Athens, Gets set for floor. And something's wrong with the music. <laughs> Naturally. Oh, so not everything is all set. <laughs> yes, just when we I thought that things back. were going to get back to normal. <laughs> this is an event where, of course, Georgia is also recalibrating. They lost Brittany Rogers, Brandy J, and Mary Beth Box. Three excellent routines. So they're trying to upgrade the level of tumbling as the season goes on. Opens for the front, double twist. All of the gymnasts are required to do a front tumbling skill. She does a very difficult one for her opening pass. And comes back with a back one and a half to the front layout. We mentioned that she's the athlete still recovering from E. coli, hospitalized last season. So 
this would be the one event that is most taxing in terms of your fitness and endurance and the immune system. I asked Coach Durante how they select their music and do the choreography. And she has a friend who helps with the choreography, but really lets them pick music that their fans love. Good routine, not a huge level of difficulty in terms of we're gonna see some E passes and we'll, we'll talk about throughout the course of the meet and the season, those big, difficult skills she ends with a Rudy, a one and a half twist. I thought it was interesting when we asked Dana Durani about who's her choreographer. She said, well, I don't really want to tell you. It's a secret. It's a secret because I don't think she wants other teams yeah. stealing the choreographer. Maya Hambrick, LSU now. Aaron McAdag, 985 in the leadoff role. That's huge. This routine has a different personality than Erin, but equally impressive in the way she performs it. She just moves so smoothly. I love the pace of this routine. Hits every position. You can really tell that LSU has decided they're going to work on every single detail. says consistency wins. It's often the case, but they have even more than consistency. Good difficulty throughout their team. Look how light she is on the balance beam. That back handspring layout. Just effortless. I think another higher level of polish than we've seen from previous teams at LSU. So it's all coming together for the Tigers this year. And it's going to take it because there's a lot of talent in the NCAA now. Finishes with a double twist. Excellent landing. They're already trying to stick landings. First meet out of the season. That's pretty extraordinary. Just a beautiful quality. Let's, let's hear what Didi has to say. You can really tell there is such a connection between these athletes and their coach. They love this woman, they believe in her, and really want to come up with something good for her this season. Georgia's Beth Roberts now. Morgan Reynolds in the leadoff spot at a 9-8. Now remember, she had the fall on vault. This is an opportunity for her to get back out there. Very well done, good opening, pike double back. Certainly one of the most challenging things to do in gymnastics is to come back from a fall. But it's the most important thing you can do. You can see a lot of concentration on her face as she Enter those leaps and jumps, really trying to show the position in the air, get the turns all the way around. The judges really need to see that in order to give them credit for the difficulty. Wins with the tuck double back. Handles that landing. Nice to see a smile on her face. Very good comeback for her. There's a young lady when she goes back home to Tifton, Georgia. She helps out at her former gym, Tift Gymnastics. She does two double backs in this routine. The first one in a piked position with the legs straight, and then a double back here in tucked position. Think about how inspiring these young ladies are. There's a lot of little girls around the country that dream of someday competing for a major school like Georgia or LSU, and so all of these young ladies, including Lauren Lee here, 
or LSU. And this is her. Scholarships at these major schools. This is one of the most coveted things in all of gymnastics. This is her debut. Beautiful combination. We're going to see a little more of those three element combinations on balance beam this year, I think. Combining three skills in a row. Look at that. Switch leg leap right to a standing layout step out. So after Aaron McAdake's 985 leadoff, Maya Hambrick had a 987. Really pleased to see this routine in the lineup. Very pretty position in that switch side leap. High toe, look at that, up on Releve. Love to see that. And her dismount off to the side. Very nice job and her debut oh, is so please. successful look how excited her teammates are and i'm sure Dee, Dee thinks the same let's listen in you tell me she doesn't do every skill with them Very special moment for that lady. Gigi Marino. Good to see her in the lineup. At first she wasn't going to compete. Tweaked her ankle a little bit. They were gonna hold her back. She said she was ready and just did a tough double back instead of the double layout in that first pass. Vivi Babalis from Canada, my bad. They have changed their lineup several times, even here in the last few minutes. We got a few uh, notices about movement within the lineup. Vivi, of course, the junior out of Montreal, Quebec. Competed in beam and floor exercise in all 16 minutes in 2016. And you'll notice Vivi doesn't do back handsprings in her routine. She's had an elbow issue throughout her career. So watch this. She'll finish with a round off into a pike double bat. No back handspring. Ooh, pulled that off. Again, like, like Coach Durani said, they're not quite finishing everything. They start out hard and just didn't follow through with that landing on the final pass. But again, it's early in the season. I love this, drop the chalk. I think that's like drop the mic. <laughs> and right out of the round off, just legs buckle just a little bit, may, may have felt a little fatigue. First meet of the season. Lauren Lee had a terrific 9.85 and that brings up Fourth performer, Sydney Ewing, a senior from Lafayette, Louisiana. Watch this pass, I love it. Lands on two feet out of the layout, right here. Beautiful position. I'm telling you, you can really see the good training they have put in preseason. Well, as you hear this beautiful rendition of Hallelujah going on in the background of Sydney Ewing's routine, this is her brother Travis, the rendition that he did when he was a contestant on The Voice. He finished in the top three, but I thought what soothing comfort it must give her up there on the beam to have her brother serenading her. Oh, what a talented family, too. She finishes with a one and a half twist. Let's see if she can get the stop oh. landing. Wow, look. Oh, that face, that reaction, priceless. Absolutely love it. There's a young lady that walked onto the team and in 2014, she was third in the NCAA on the balance beam as a walk-on. Excellent. 
Oh, I don't know what I like better, Dee Dee's reaction or Sydney's. That was just incredible. And the musical accompaniment by her brother. What a lovely moment. Sabrina Vega now, the freshman out of Carmel, New York. For Georgia on the floor. Vivi Bobble has had a 9-4-2-5. Opens with a full in. And Sabrina can dance and perform the heck out of this routine. A lot of gymnastics fans remember Sabrina, five years member of the U.S. national team. We talk about the higher and higher levels of competition in collegiate gymnastics. She's a world champion, member of the 2011 World Championship team for the U.S. And she just missed out on the spot at the 2012 Olympics. This is delightful choreography. Perfectly suited for this gymnast. <laughs> Very nicely done. I mean, you can really see the extraordinary technique that she has. That elite training really shines through. But the polish and the way that she performs is, is truly the highlight of the routine. Back to the beam now for LSU. This is sophomore Sarah Finnegan. Sydney Ewing before her notched their highest score so far, a 9-9. So they have two 9-8-5s, a 9-8-7-5, and a 9-9. Watch this. One, two, and three. A triple wolf turn. I am just amazed every time I see it because as all gymnasts do, we look at something that we just know we cannot do. I cannot imagine doing that. Very nice pace of this routine. She is such a natural beam worker. Look at the position, the leaps in the air. Perfect split, perfect toe point. Side somersault. They are so on this meet, on this event. Ariel Hartwell right into the dismount, and another stuck landing. This is an amazing start. Yeah, incredible performance in the first meet of the year for LSU. How about this, Kathy? Check this out. One, two, three. It's like a helicopter. I call it a Finnegan again again. <laughs> With a young lady who was one of the alternates to the 2012 Olympic team, she gives a thrill to Dee Dee Bro, and the Tigers off to an amazing start here in the first meet of the year. Back to the floor. Gigi Marino now, after they juggled the lineup a bit, is set to go. We weren't sure she yeah. was going to go. She was the one who wasn't supposed to be in the lineup. And then I thought she was going to go earlier in the lineup. Then they put her at the end. By the look on her face, she is happy to be here. One and a half twist to the front layout. Very common pass. We'll see a lot in collegiate gymnastics. I'd like to show that combination of back and front tumbling. And with another double back here, this time in tuck position. 
Very good routine. It will be a very good routine when she puts that double layout back in. Get that E skill in there, but nice to see her be able to compete here. Now try this part. Can you do it? Uh, yeah, actually, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, your the beat maker. Four foot, ten inch, powerful uh, athlete, Gigi Marino, the junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Well done. Ashley Nat, the anchor performer on the beam for LSU. Sarah Finnegan, a 995. So the stage is set for perhaps an even higher score for the 11 time All American. And she has truly earned this anchor spot for this team. Such a team player, such a leader. I sat with her parents during the inter squad. It's fun, her mom. Joan Moore represented the United States in the Olympic Games, and <laughs> she still gets nervous, does every skill with her as she was watching. Not nervous, she's confident. Her she daughter's ability. Her father, Ray, was an All-American <laughs> gymnast here at LSU, so. And he still gets so excited for his baby. It's fun to watch the parents enjoy. Wait, we're not done yet, and her sister, National champion, all American at Alabama between 2001 and 2004. Yeah, she puts the back handspring layout step out at the end of her. T oh, she loved that and milked the landing. This is a stellar routine to perhaps finish one of their best season opening beam rotations. A double twist. Oh, yeah. Oh, almost got the stock landing. <laughs> wow. Literally, LSU looks like they are starting the season where they left off at the NCAA championships. A lot of teams are sort of getting back into the momentum of the season, but LSU looks in championship form the first meet of the year. Absolutely, and she can stick this easily. She really, really wanted this landing right here. Boom. Heart, all heart, that's their mantra this season. Final performer now for Georgia, Sydney Sneed. Gigi Marino before her in 9.825. That's their high school on floor so far. Opens with a full in and just keeps it in bounds, it looks like. work a little more than usual on that skill. She had trouble in the warm-ups with it, really getting the timing out of the one and a half into the back handspring. Talk about her family's legacy in sports. Her mother was a cheerleader at NC State. Her father played baseball there and then played in the minor leagues for the Cincinnati Reds. bit short on her final pass. Pike double back. Chest was down. Sophomore Sydney Sneed. She's the featured performer for the Georgia Gym Dogs. When you see all their promotional materials going out, they're really high on her potential, and you can see it's all there. Let's go down to Holly. We got a little chalk in the air. It's okay. I like it. I like it. Coach, Erin uh, McAdeg leads you off on the beam. You weren't even sure that she'd be able to perform after that broken bone in her foot. What did she do to set up that rotation? Well, she's done a lot of mental sets and walk through sets, and she's just a, a great beam worker. You know, some kids that struggle on beam, and she's a natural on beam, and i, I got to give it to her because she works hard. And she doesn't do all the events, but the ones she does, she does well. So you have such a great experience returning, so many older competitors that you can rely on. Well, it's the freshman who goes out and wins on her very first vault, wins the vault title, and Kennedy Edney, what'd you think? Well, that's good recruiting. That's good recruiting. Um, Jay spotted that, that gymnast a long time ago, and 
But that was the first gymnast he wanted me to go after when he got here. But she's she's good on all four events. But we're just we're only using her on two events tonight. We see a lot of your gymnasts tonight pounding their chest like this after their routines. All heart. That's the motto. What do you think about how they have started out this season? Well, I think it. I, their body of work has been very, very good. They're focused, they're extremely close as a team, and they're committed to their mission. And you know, we talk about the journey, and we talk about a lot of things that makes a team come together, spend a lot of time with that. And um, this is a product of, of kids that want to be successful. All right, what can we look forward to on the floor now? Uh, we want to be exciting. We're going to throw a lot of difficulty. We want to be exciting. And um, this is the first step in a long journey. So, you know, we just want to be consistent. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Alex. And when we come back, LSU goes to the floor. They are on record-setting pace in their opening meet of the year. D.D. Brown's happy, and so are the Tiger fans. At Regions Bank, we're here to help you move your life forward. But managing money can be tough. That's why sometimes we bring in a little extra help. It's only $1,500. Mm -hmm. I'll use it this time, I promise. Sure. $1,500 for a soon-to-be very expensive doorstop probably isn't the best investment. Exactly. Look, you don't need fancy equipment to get in shape. Check out my personal program at tboflex.com. You should do whatever he's doing. It's free. Check it out. Regions, official bank of the SEC. <laughs> I'll be posting results in the morning. You guys did great. Stretch off the horse and just let it happen, okay? Don't go down there looking for it. Just let it happen. This song, it doesn't matter where I am. It's so hard for me not literally to just go, like, break down. Kennedy! We want to see that fire-breathing dragon! Yeah. Ha! Ah! I think we're better than what we're doing all the way around. I feel like you guys are aggressive on the start, but you've got to be able to finish strong. Stay focused, let's be aggressive on this event. See it and feel it. Everything lines up. Dee Dee Bro and Dana Durante, two very different personalities, but both extremely high achieving and intense coaches. And when we come back, we'll go to the final rotation. Of course, that means Ashley Nett will be competing for LSU on the floor four times. She has scored a perfect 10. It's time to tailgate. You and me in the tailgate 2000, tailgating across America. You want to come with me? Want to go on a road trip? Me and Marcus, tailgate tour. I don't know about that. I'll think about it. Man. You'll think about it? Cardell, it was his idea. Cordell's going? Marcus was like, hey, I'll go on that. No. Bench will work. He's uh, coming. I'm going to give him a call. Oh, don't do that. I'll let you drive. If you let me drive, I'll go. Shotgun. Oh, yeah, you drive. Yeah, I can yeah. drive. Hey, Larry, I thought I was driving. Guys, call Dr. Pepper, yeah? Let's go, Dr. Pepper, yeah? In 1916, Warren Miller chose auto owner's insurance for his new car. In 1947, his son made the same choice, as did his grandson in 1979. And today, his great-granddaughter did the same. As we celebrate 100 years, we're grateful to our independent agents and to those who have put their trust in us and to the generations who will. Auto Owners Insurance. And welcome back to the PMAC in Baton Rouge. Number nine, Georgia, 146-375 LSU on a record-setting pace. For the opening meet of the season, a 148-35, and they go to the floor where they are dynamic. And Georgia will open up on the beam, which, as we have indicated in the past, has been a challenge for Georgia. Last year, Kathy, we talked a lot about the up and down nature of Georgia's experiences on the beam, and yet they finished strong at the Super Six Finals NCAA Championships. And their plan after that terrific finish at the Super Six Finals was to take up where they left off. They're opening with Sabrina Vega, a beautiful beam worker, but she has not competed in a while. And this is an event that usually takes some neat experience to really settle into the event, to be confident completely. 
and to be able to trust your training and just go in and be aggressive from start to finish. She managed to stay on, but that will be a pretty sizable deduction just for the balance break. She did her club training at Great American Gymnastics Express in Blue Springs, Missouri, even though she was born in Carmel, New York. position. Back leg was a little bit low on that second jump. Really needs to get that even with the legs and show a little bit more split. And finishes an aerial cartwheel to a full twist. Not a bad routine for the first time back in a long, long time. Yes, there was the break early in the routine, but she regained her composure, stayed aggressive, and hit the rest of the routine right here. With the back hands the layout step out. You can see she lands almost on the edge of the beam. It's floor time! Showing a little personality there. And connects the aerial card wall into her back of the fall. To the floor now for LSU. Sydney Ewing had a 9-9 on the beam. Uh, let's see what she can do off a leadoff spot here on the floor. We've often noted that LSU gymnasts are really explosive. It shows here. And this is new choreography and new routine for Sydney. Front double twist, and I can tell by the look on her face, she really likes performing this one. Very good control on the landings, particularly for first meet of the season and the extra adrenaline that comes with that. She was known for this type of choreography where they really use every beat of the music. The very active routines, very complex choreography. Finishes with a pipe double back, just a teeny bit on the short side, but she pulled it off. Very, very well done. Great job. I can only imagine the energy that they expend particularly in a first meet when the nerves are higher and you really got to manage that adrenaline and to try to keep the energy all the way through to the end of the meet and that last tumbling pass, which can be very difficult. Next on balance meet for Georgia. Talked about the up and down season that L the Georgia had on the beam last year. Look at this, in the regular season, they were 30th in the NCAA, averaging below 49. And then in the Super 6 final, it all came together. They had their season high score, 49-3-6-2-5, when it counted. And I know that Coach Dana Durani told us the other day that that was really rewarding to see them finally figure out the balance beam when it counted at the national championships. Well, especially when you've seen how hard they've worked in the gym to be consistent. Oh, no. Again, it's, it goes with what Dana had told them. You, I see you start strong, but then it wanes. It doesn't, you don't finish it strong. You've earned the right to be aggressive and confident. Use that. Well, it's very interesting because you see that these gymnasts have terrific potential. But I think what's really lacking is that competitive confidence that will hopefully yep. develop throughout the year because it's not like they don't have the capability of doing it. It's just these athletes have had very little collegiate experience and certainly very few of them have competed in a place like here at LSU, which is not exactly a welcoming environment if you're a Georgia gym dog. Nice spin. Oh, double twist way off to the side. There'll be some sizable deductions in there, but it was an experience you have to you have to go through. That first time up on the balance beam, she does not have much experience. 
competing. She was off from the beginning, even the back handspring. It was just slightly off to the left. And two large steps, of course, those will be big deductions. Just needs more confidence. Back to the floor now. Shea Zamardi will be up. Sydney Ewing led them off with a very nice 9.85. And I want to draw your attention to something so special with this athlete and with this routine. Her footwork is so exquisite. Every time the foot leaves the floor, it points hard every step. Arabian double. Pretty good control on that landing. Watch the feet, just so beautiful. They leave the floor, they point and stay pointed until they go back into the step. It's just such a nice quality. You know, you don't even see that polish at the international elite level anymore. It's, it's a lost art. It really is. There's so much focus on power and difficulty that you're seeing fewer and fewer fewer routines that have this kind of artistry. Absolutely. I, I just love the quality of that routine, and it's so nice to see. She doesn't have the big power that some of the gymnasts that, that may out-tumble her, but this was a great opening tumbling run. Arabian double front, slightly over-rotated, but watch the feet on the skip and the hop into it. Nice position in the air. Beautifully done. So Rachel Dixon had a 9-1-5 after that fall on the game, so it puts a little additional pressure here on Sydney Sneed. Oh, nice. As I mentioned, uh, we will see more of those three element combinations like we just saw there. Love to see the tumbling out of the layout step out. Look at that. Combining dance difficulty with the acrobatic difficulty. See the nerves creep up just a little bit. You can see it in her face. She needs to calm, breathe. Stay focused and follow through. Go to Holly. Well, we see Sydney Steve setting up here for her dismount. She is the cornerstone anchor of this team this year. You see her as the anchor and one of the key performers in all four apparatus so far this season. And Dana is telling us that, you know, we look to her, all of her teammates look to her to see if things are going well, and her pulling through and kind of fighting through to finish that routine there is a good example of that. Good point, Holly, and she really is such a strong leader, not just vocally, but by her actions, strong routines, confident routines. And she's just a sophomore. Now to Lexi Priestman, a sophomore for LSU. Good to see her on this event. Had some injuries she had to work through. You can see those ankles heavily taped. Now she'll open with a full end. She's exceptional on the uneven bars. It's nice to see her here on the floor. Combinations, we'll jump after the tumbling pass. You 
can tell this team works hard on fitness because these are high energy floor routines. The choreography, not just the tumbling, requires a lot of energy. Hi, oh no! I knew that uh, takeoff was very, very sluggish. Oh, too bad. Hopefully that didn't tweak the ankles too bad. Ouch. Oh, we know those, that does not feel good, but you could tell on the takeoff, really it was very, very sluggish. The legs almost buckled. She was almost forward when she punched to get off the floor. Her hips go forward, so there wasn't the tightness in the body that you need to get that block and that punch off the floor. She did a good job pulling it around, protecting the ankles on the landing. Typically, that's the kind of endurance that you build throughout the exactly. season. So hopefully she's okay. But those ankles are going to sting for a few days, no question about it. Ashley Broussard now for Georgia on the team. Sydney Sneed had a 9-8. Very impressive. One arm back handspring to the layout. Oh, no, no, no. That, oh, that is fall. just a lack of confidence. She can do that pass so well. And it's a funny thing on beam. You want something to, to create the belief within yourself that you can do it. But sometimes that has to come first. You have to be ahead of it. You have to believe you can do it before. And this will definitely be one of those uh, back to the drawing board. They're going to go back into training. Learn how to be aggressive, confident, follow through on everything. It's like Dee Dee Bro said to her athletes, see it, feel it. And then finish it. Mm, too bad, it's a beautiful routine. Of course, they'll take the five tenths off for the fall and it, and it was just a matter of being extremely confident and then aggressive on that landing. Because sometimes you can correct, make tiny little corrections. I mean, she was already second guessing her. The, the, it was almost like she was on hot That's coals when she landed. Back to floor now, Maya Hambrick for LSU after Lexi Priestman notches a 9.2, which is the first hiccup tonight for LSU, which has been on a record-setting opening season performance. And you spell this floor routine F-U-N. This is such fun choreography. Wow. Really nice floaty double layout. She is such a talent. could really see on that tumbling path the tightness of the block that's what really gets you up in the air yeah, it's really interesting that she didn't have much elite gymnastic experience so for a lot of the recruiters she kind of flew under the radar a little bit but Jay Clark having been at Georgia for years had noticed her she's from Temple Georgia and he kept an eye on this young lady and now look at her as a junior at LSU and what she can do. She finished third in the all-around at the NCAAs last year. So she's a terrific all-around performer. Every event is strong. Yeah, and that what was a great performer she's become. Probably one of the big surprises of the NCAA championship was her third place in the all-around. And people are like, wait, who is she? Man, she's good. So after opening with a double layout, she ends with a pike double back. Very good control on those landings. Next up, balance for Georgia, DB Fabulous. I mean, this team has definitely put in the work preseason. Ashlyn Broussard has a 9-1-5, unfortunately, so Vivi Bobolis now 
set to go. So the scores for Georgia, they have a 9-8 from Snead, a 9-6-2-5 from Vega, and 2-9-1-5. So extra pressure on their final two performers. Vivi Bobulus and then Rachel Schick will be their anchor performer. I just started to see the, the nerves and the, the tightness come over her body. She really needs, she's trying very hard to breathe, relax, get into a rhythm. It's all about tempo on game and being consistent with what you do in the gym and training, bring it into the competition. There's also that fine line of allowing it to happen, but making it happen, it's taking control. She has a double back dismount, one of the harder dismounts we'll see tonight. And, oh, she's got her hips back behind her on the landing. She had over-rotated in warm-ups and she was really being careful there not to, but her hips were behind. That's what caused the steps backwards. Hey, that's McKenna Kelly, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Some of you gymnastics fight fans might remember that young lady there, Mary Lou Rett. Kathy, your teammate in the 84 Olympics, and Mary Lou is McKenna's mother. Her father is Shannon Kelly, who is a former quarterback at the University of Texas. So once again, great legacy in the sports world. And you'll see a little of Mary Lou's power yeah. and explosiveness Absolutely. in this year. Absolutely. This is a new routine for McKenna, much more dramatic, much more powerful and dynamic to go with the tumbling. Watch this. Opens with the double layout. Beautiful position in the air. And I'm sure her mother was doing that with her in the stands. <laughs> Now she's working the full in for this second pass. I believe she's going to do it here. Make this routine extremely difficult. Oh, yeah. Open. Open <laughs> position in that full in. <laughs> oh, boy, she just made Mama proud. I remember one of the highlights yeah. of our season last year was having Mary Lou sit in the booth <laughs> with us and sort of scream her daughter through her routine. What a thrill. This oh, is great. Oh, and that was much better. Those. That leap sequence is the best she's done since beginning her college career. Front through to tuck double back. Nice. Look at her go. <laughs> First Ooh. time with this floor routine. Upgraded the tumbling. <laughs> Holy cow, good for her. Yeah, you can see she loves it. Mama loves it. Now she's coming after Maya Hambrick's 9-9. She upgraded her difficulty in tumbling, new choreography, and she nailed it. Look at that power. There's mom doing it with her. Woo! <laughs> And she does a front into the double back. <laughs> How fun. And that's Bug's mom right in front of Mary Lou, Joan Morton now. Oh, they're having a good time. Rachel Schick, final performer for Georgia on the beam. <gasps> and oh, no. Nerves, nerves, nerves. You can just see it. The foot just like so unsure, even before it landed. So while LSU is pouring it on on the floor, Georgia looks as if they just can't wait to get back home and get back to work to continue the season. Vivi Bobulus before her had a 9-5, so Rachel Schick will also receive a lower score as a result of that fall. Combining three elements. It's Getting back into the rhythm of the routine. Even unsureness there with the, with the landing, you really, really have to attack those landings very firmly and will yourself. 
really, on those landings. And that's what they'll go back to the gym and work on, talk about it. I know Dana Durante asked them lots of questions. What were you feeling, you know, to try to figure this out? Okay, well, we go to the floor now for the final performer of today's meet. And, of course, it's always a highlight when Ashley Knapp, the senior 11-time All-American, steps up to the floor four times. She scored perfect tens on the floor. And get this, Maya Hambrick has had such a great meet tonight. Ashley Knapp needs a 10 to tie for the all round. We've actually seen her get a 10 on the floor exercise last season. LSU already has a 197.075 team score, and they can even improve it because they're gonna replace a 9-2 from Lexi Priestman if Nat can hit. Big E tumbling pass to open with a gorgeous double layout. to the punch front, showing so much difficulty in her tumbling. LSU loves to push that envelope, really, really show as much difficulty as they possibly can while still being consistent. Gonna finish it with a high double back. Nice lift. That was beautiful lift into it. And a perfect landing. Wow, what a way for this team to finish. And how appropriate the Bugs pulls it out. How about that, Tiger fans? Boy, her tumbling was sensational throughout. First tumbling was a double layout, and then the last pass, this was outstanding lift. Watch her get her arms up, way up. Dee Dee Bro in her 40th season, off to an amazing start for LSU, the first meet of the year. And they already look to be in championship form. We will add up the scores on the floor. as Ashley Nats 995 comes in. As LSU gets a 197-825, a huge score to open the season. And in fact, it's the highest season opener in the history of LSU gymnastics. Look at that, folks as the entire team and coaching staff comes to greet the first lady and governor of Louisiana University Presidents, athletic directors. They're all here tonight to salute this incredible team and Dee Dee Bro in her 40th year. What a night and what a way, Kathy, to start our season of live coverage on the SEC Network. We will be back to wrap it up. What a night of gymnastic. We are on our way for the SEC gymnastic season. Glad you've been with us. Autotalk.com said Cooper Discoverer SRX tires are insanely good. We invite you to buy a set and find out for yourself. Put Cooper tires on your car today. Thrilling night here in Baton Rouge. Here are the scores in front of an adoring crowd. LSU, the number two preseason team, bringing in number nine, Georgia. And LSU, how do you say it, Kathy? I mean, they're literally a 197.825 is by far their highest opening score 
in history of the program. I think it might be one of the highest opening scores of any team in the NCAA in an opening meet. How impressive was this? I'm, holy cow, that's what I could say. It was, it was really impressive. You could see the hard work that they've clearly put in in preseason to start this strong. And then on top of that, I, I think there's so many layers. There's so much heart. They have dedicated this mission that they're on this season to Dee Dee Bro. And well, as we came on the air, we talked about the fact that Dee Dee Bro in her 40th season, and she's trying to downplay expectations. But this is going to do nothing for that case because gonna everybody's going to be yeah. buzzing and about how Dee Dee good. doesn't downplay anything either. So. <laughs> Pretty let's, amazing. Let's see, uh, Holly is with one of the stars of tonight, Kennedy Edney. Well, I wanted to start with Kennedy because in the first appearance you've ever made in this building, you come out and win the vault. What was going through your mind for your very first competition? I was very excited to be, compete with LSU Tigers. It was so much fun. It was a great experience to have, and I can't wait for the next three years. As a freshman, what did it mean for you to contribute like that tonight? It makes me feel really good that I can contribute to a to a great team that's already great but yeah <laughs> I've also got the seniors standing by here and I've got to interview them together because they love to do everything together right yes this is Ashley Nat yes. and Maya Hambrick and when they announced that this was the highest opening score in school history what went through your mind um, just absolute pride. Um, tonight was absolutely amazing. We had so much fun out here with our fans, and I think it was just a great way to kick off the season. I have so much pride for this team, for this university. It was a really great night. You told me yesterday that the theme for tonight was the battle of perception. What do you think the perception will be around the country after they see yeah. this score? I mean, coming out with a 197.8 is huge, and I think that people are going to see that, and, you know, that'll make them want to go see what we did, and they're going to see what we did, and they're going to see that we really earned that tonight. We really fought for every 10th, and um, we still even had, like, handstands and landings and things like that that weren't totally perfect, and we practiced them perfect. So I think that the perception this, these days are, is probably pretty good of us, so yes. I think we did a good job. I know that this is a great starting point, but how will you avoid being satisfied with this and continuing to push all season long? It's so early. Uh, well, like Maya said, tonight wasn't perfect for us. We know where we made mistakes, and we know that we can get back in the gym and keep pushing harder. Um, it, it's amazing that it's a great starting point, but we're even more excited to see how far we can really go. And for you, the polish, uh, you know, Kathy Clark kept saying the polish is there so early in the season. Tell me through your beam routine, how are you able to have that beautiful polish? I mean, it's just like we do in practice, you know, Dee Dee tells us to get a ready set on floor, which just means like going through it in your mind and feeling it in your body before you get up on the beam. And then once you get up there, you just kind of listen to what your music is because, we, you know, we pick it and just things like that. So, um, yeah, and it's just it's really calming when I have people on the side that I know are really invested in what I'm doing. Also, it doesn't feel like I'm out there alone. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's the first meet, so we have a long way to go. <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. I will grab your coach now. Dee Dee Bro is standing by, and Dee Dee, no big deal. The governor is here to award you with a presentation at the beginning. What does it mean to you to be recognized for your 40 years of contribution here? Well, I love my job, and I love the state of Louisiana. And um, you know, every day I come to work with just anticipation of, of you know, what what can we do great today? What how, what can we do to make LSU better? And I don't know. I've got a great staff and a great team, and. Obviously, the administration supports this program at the very highest level, and it's, I mean, it's Go Tigers around here all the time. Well, it was Go Tigers tonight. I, um, this is the highest opening score in school history. What did that make you feel like to come off the second place finish, but to know that these kids are pushing hard and they want more? They want more. They want, they want to win. They, they, they want to leave their mark at LSU, and I think they've already done that. And we tell them all the time, you don't, really don't have anything to prove. Let's just go out and do you. Be you. Um, you know, we had so many victories tonight. Aaron McAdag, Kennedy Edney, Ashley Nad, a new floor routine with all that difficulty in it for McKenna Kelly. Just um, Lexi Priestman doing more than one event for us, really coming out. I mean, she could have done four events tonight, but we're really trying to get all this team ready. So I, I just can't say enough good things about my staff and, and LSU. Well, thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate you having us here for the season opener. We can't wait to see where this season leads you. I'm glad you're here, Holly. I'm I'm glad. Glad. Can you, will you call me a fire-breathing dragon, though? That was my favorite thing. I will call you a fire-breathing dragon. I love it. All right. And I'm going to take you kayaking, and I'm going to take you fishing. All right. It's a promise. You heard it here. Bart, Kathy, back to you. Well done. Congratulations, Dee, and thank you, Holly Rowe. It's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. I am so excited about this season. I know you are as well, Kathy. Here, three months of live gymnastics coming up. 
on the SCC Network and every Friday night we're somewhere covering an event like this. Of course, it'll culminate with the NCAA Championships in mid-April in St. Louis and we'll be there covering it as well. Your final thoughts well, on tonight? Well, like their beloved coach, Didi Bro, said to them right before Beam, see it, feel it. I think they can add, believe it. Mm. They have so much that they can put together for this incredible run this year, and they have what it takes to, and that's heart. Yeah, that's wonderful. I know that I'm excited to be with you all the way till mid-April when we cover the NCAA championship. We're glad you joined us tonight for a thrilling opening night of the SEC Network's live coverage of gymnastics. That's it from Baton Rouge. Coming up next, SEC Now, presented by Regions Bank. For Holly Rowe, Kathy Johnson-Clark, and our entire crew, I'm Bar Connor. So long from Baton Rouge.